uh, we'll let some folks get into the room a little bit. That takes a couple of seconds, so we'll let that, uh, that happen, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Again, thanks for joining us. Well, greetings, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for the inaugural Rabbit Roundup. My name is Andy Foberg, and I'm the president and CEO of the SDSU Alumni Association. Normally, our guest today and I would be in Sioux Falls for a Sioux Empire Staters luncheon, uh, but 2020 is uh, the year of pivoting. So here we are. Um, for those of you from the Sioux Falls area, the Sioux Empire Staters have purchased some gift cards from Pizza Ranch uh, to continue to support them until we can meet in person again. Um, we'll be drawing the winners uh, of that after the webinar and we'll reach out to those uh, winners uh, personally. So nothing you have to do on your end, but uh, we look forward to being back together. Uh, but until then, again, uh, thank you for joining us. Several of you submitted questions in advance, but if you have questions um, for our guests, feel free to submit those in either the um, chat or the Q&A using the buttons uh, at the bottom of your screen. A big thank you to Coach John Stigelmeyer for being our first guest um, and our guinea pig a little bit uh, as we do this. Um, when you introduce the winningest football coach in SDSU history, it is hard to decide what to highlight. Oh, we could talk about the transition and building in in his words, uh, taking a mediocre Division II team into an FCS powerhouse. But I would rather talk about how he keeps the student in student athlete and his effort to support players, uh, how to be mad, making a difference in the community and campus, um, a big part of being a student athlete and a member of the football team. I'm gonna turn the floor over to Coach and then we will get to, into some questions after that. Coach Dig, again, thank you so much for joining us today. You bet, Andy, it's a treat, it really is. Uh, this is my real garb when I come to work. President Dunn bought, bought us these, so uh, when I'm not in my office, we have to wear these in our building around campus. Uh, we try to honor that. Our guys wear those during practice, uh, whatever, whatever uh, face mask they have, and really trying to honor President Dunn and his administration that's worked so hard to keep South Dakota State and, and the students going and keep them here. So. I'm gonna follow Andy, my boss's uh, uh, orders here, and I'm just gonna go through a bunch of stuff that we've been doing and the process we've gone through and would love to answer, would love to answer any questions at the end or all the questions at the end. Uh, it's been obviously a crazy year. It, uh, to go back in time, we sent our, our students home, our players home. Uh, their spring break, uh, the, we postponed their extended spring break an extra week and then uh, we put uh, SDSU online. And so we missed spring ball. We missed that development. Our true freshmen missed a uh, chance to learn things and put the pads on and so on, uh, which is really their opportunity to, to grow as, uh, as athletes. Um, and then the summer was bizarre. Uh, the summer, normally we would have 110, 112 guys here working out uh, full speed ahead and we had guys here could not lift. We had about 20 or 30 guys here that could not lift, could not use the facility. Uh, I, I left my office in the middle of March and was not able to come back to my office and sit in it and do some work until the middle of June. And so again, uh, not complaining, really honoring and complimenting our administration for doing everything they could to, to protect people. So eventually our guys were able to lift we set up 20 stations in the weight room and we could only have 20 guys in there at a time. Uh, they had to use the same rack the whole time. They had to have their own water bottle. They would, came in one door, got their temperatures, left it and they were done. Our strength coaches were obviously in there uh, coaching them, but, but they're kind of a, kind of a quiet uh, situation. Uh, we evolved in bringing more guys back. One of our biggest concerns was, you know, guys being at home and everything being shut down and, and not being able to work out. And, and, you know, these are different times than the old days where a guy could work on the farm, come back for fall camp and be ready to, to go. These guys left year round. And so 
we, we worked hard to find all, all our guys places to lift, but it was really a struggle. Uh, but then moving forward, eventually we were able to bring two guys in per rack, so 40 guys in the weight room. They had to be a roommate if they were going to share a, a space and, uh, and, and really tried to grow as a football program. Uh, I told our staff that every decision we made, the priority was the health of our student athletes, the health of our coaches, and the health of their families. And so uh, we really tried to honor that, and I think we really have. Uh, through this process. Uh, in July 13, uh, the NCAA passed a rule that we could require guys to come back. And uh, we just asked our upperclassmen to come back, did not ask our freshmen to come back. I, I felt in my heart that uh, there's going to be some crazy stuff going on, and, and I didn't want them here uh, alone in a room, not being able to socialize that first few weeks on campus. And, and that don't make many great decisions, but that was a good decision because um, uh, July 24th, uh, we brought, uh, a, a started a new process in terms of, I guess we had them all here and we started a 20 hour week, still, not, still didn't bring our freshmen back. And so they, these are all evolutions of what the NCAA came up with. So initially nobody could be on campus, then you could bring them back. And then they created this thing called summer access, which was a 20 hour week, week that we could deal with our players, you could have, eight hours of lifting, six hours of walkthroughs, and then six hours of, of meetings. And everything, we've, we've not held a, a one player meeting uh, since this happened in person. All our meetings have been Zoom, all our coaches meetings, other than a coordinator meeting every once in a while, uh, have been uh, Zoom, uh, virtual, and, and again, really trying to do things right. Now here's, here's where it got crazy. So we bring our freshmen back, we're, we're supposed to start fall camp August 7th, we bring our freshmen back the fifth and the sixth. They get physicals and the night of the sixth, we, we, we call a team meeting and uh, uh, President Dunn was there, Justin Seller AD was there and I was there and our whole team was there. And uh, Justin said, tomorrow we're gonna pull the plug on the season. And so our, our freshmen were there two days and they're told that the season's over. So our guys have yet to put a pair of pads on. Uh, and they were, they were hopefully, and that's since last spring, really. And so it's been a long, long journey for these guys. We started school. We chose to not do as much as we could with our guys, uh, just to try to, again, do everything we could to honor President's, Dunn vision, President's Dunn's vision. And uh, so the first two weeks, we laid low. The third week, then, there was a new process set up by the NCAA that uh, was a 12 hour a week process. So again, these are, these are accountable hours that we can be with our athletes, require of our athletes. And uh, five of those could be individual instruction with helmets on, and then the other seven would be meetings uh, and lifting. And so really went down from the 20, but more football-like with helmets and, and uh, uh, spikes and footballs. Now let me, let me go back. When the decision was made to to cancel the season, you get a, eleven regular season games during a year, and so the vision was to play the eight conference games in the spring. I'll talk about that in a little while, and so we could have played uh, three games this fall, and uh, it's through a lot of decision making, a lot of layers, a lot of discussions, um, we decided not to. Uh, now, we jumped on it. Once I heard that, the next day we were contacting teams. When the Big Ten dropped their games, we contacted their their uh, their teams. And you know, when I look back at it, it was kind of funny. We're contacting a MAC school to try to give them give, give us a guarantee. And the one MAC school I, I talked to, they lost $1.8 million in the Big Ten games they lost. And so <laughs> they probably weren't in any position to pay us to come play play them. So, and it's just changed. It's been so interesting. We met as, as Missouri Valley coaches with Patty Viverito, our commissioner, on a Monday. And, and, and when we got off the call at 12 o'clock noon, she said there are no walkthroughs in the 12 hour uh, system. That night I got an email, that night, very night, I got an email from her, 1030 at night, said there are walkthroughs in the 12 hour system. So it just literally has changed not only weekly, but sometimes during the day 
of, of what we're trying to do. Um, again, our guys haven't had pads on. They've not used the locker. They've not used the shower. Uh, two weeks ago, we implemented doing their laundry. Uh, it, this is all NCAA um, football oversight committee, the board of governors uh, going through all these things and making decisions. And I know everybody has an opinion, uh, but there's a lot of very smart people uh, trying to trying to figure out what's best for the student athletes. Tomorrow, uh, they vote on if we get spring ball in the fall. What does that mean? Normally in spring, we get 15 practices within 34 days. And uh, it's highly regulated in terms of pads, no pads, scrimmages, and so on. And tomorrow they vote if we're going to get that type of setup uh, this fall. And so ideally, on the 21st, we could start spring ball in the fall, start our first practice, fo football practice, and then really have a spring game somewhere in October. I know that sounds funny, but I'm just using that terminology to, to reference reference uh, the system. Uh, I don't think we will be able to start as early as some because of uh, the, the, the caution that South Dakota State University is taking. Uh, they're taking our plan to uh, the medical people as we speak this week. And then from the medical people, it goes to on campus, it goes to the Jacks Are Back Committee, and then they vote on, on that. And again, every week, uh, some things change on campus also. But I do believe we'll get spring ball in the fall. Once we do that, let's go back. Had we played, like Missouri State is playing three games. North Dakota State is playing a game. Okay, so those schools have to test their entire football program and the staff, anybody that's around every week to be able to play, again, in terms of protecting uh, the student athletes. So astronomical amount of money uh, that, that Missouri State has to pay. But again, they, they got paid $600,000 from Oklahoma, so they probably can afford the, the testing. Uh, so once we start spring ball, we will have to test. 25 percent because we're not playing an opponent we just have to test 25 percent of our guys every two weeks and so the amount of time our, our administration has gone into figuring out testing for all our sports and student athletes and all the schedules it's literally by week until like uh, matt maher said uh until the college world series it's all planned out um i am so proud i'm so proud of how our guys have approached this um I mean, we have such great student athletes and, and great leadership within our student athletes. And what a time, what an what a important time to have great leadership. You know, I, I, I can't be around the student athletes. I don't, I don't get to talk to them before practice like I used to. And at the end of practice, we never, never group up as a, as, a, as a team. And so we have Sunday night team Zoom meetings. But I tell you what, our, our seniors and our, our leadership council I believe are doing a phenomenal job of uh, of uh, leading the football team. Um, after we get done with spring ball, we'll go back into the 12 hour a, a week mode. And then again, something really unique. Uh, most of you know that South Dakota State moved up the start date. We're, we're, we're having class on the three um, holidays that we normally uh, recognize, and then our guys are done. Our students are done with school November 24th. And they'll do, they'll get some days off, and then they'll do uh, their uh, finals online. And uh, so for me, a huge, huge concern about guys going home November 24th and not coming back until school starts January 10th. It's 40 some days, 47 days, I believe, of. Uh, of them having to motivate themselves and not being around their teammates and, and not being on campus and not using our weight room and so on. So uh, we, we, we try and look ahead and figure out how to, how to handle that and monitor our players. Then comes the fun part, right? The season in the spring. The season in the spring. So once our guys come back, we get them again for a, a new system. I'll call it summer access, but that same system. 20 hours a week, and then our fall camp, again, just using that concept, our fall camp will start January 22nd. And there's some problems with that in terms of 
the amount of time we get to spend with our guys because we're in class, but we'll, we'll figure that out. And then our first game right now is scheduled for February 20th, uh, 2021. We will play an uh, eight-game conference schedule um, during a nine-week schedule because of uh, the, the, the system of putting uh, everybody's schedule together. Uh, the system will be that uh, the northern teams like ourselves – uh, that play outside, and it's really us, Youngstown, Indiana State, Illinois State, probably maybe Western. Those schools will, the schedule will be reworked. They'll be the same teams, but it'll be re reworked. So we're either playing our first games in somebody's dome uh, that we'd have played them, or uh, down south, let's say uh, Southern Illinois is our only plane flight. Maybe that'll be our first game on February uh, 20th. I say, I say it's, I uh, use the the statement it's going to be really cool to see a home game in March it's literally going to be really cool and cold and frigid to see a game in March but I just I can't wait I can't wait for so many things again I'm a math guy and there's so many vectors that intersect from now getting to play to uh, the the seniors having opportunity to finish their career potentially uh, to our, our coaches doing what they do, to fans being, being, uh, having an opportunity to watch our football team. Uh, and so just, I'm really excited about that. Uh, there will be playoffs right now. The playoffs will start, uh, I think it's April 24th and, and end with a national championship on, on May 15th. Um, there will be no site. Uh, you know, we're not going to go to Frisco, Texas to play an FCS national championship. It'll be at the host school, whoever's the highest seed. Uh, there's only going to be 16 teams in the playoffs. Uh, normally, there are, there are uh, 24, 10 automatic qualifiers, and uh, 14 at large. This time, there's going to be 10 automatic qualifiers and six at large. And let me, let me uh, preference that. There are some automatic qualifiers that get into the FCS playoffs that aren't even in the top 25. There's some leagues that the winner may be six and five and haven't won, won a game in the FCS playoffs ever, but we ha they ha they're going to be in the playoffs. And so there's going to be a lot of good football teams, uh, different than when it's the field's 24, that are going to be watching the playoffs. But I'm excited that there will be playoffs. They're going to seed four teams, I believe, and then, uh, again, play a 16-team uh, playoff. Um, can't wait. Can't wait for that, that to happen. Uh, everybody on our football team, everybody in college football gets a free year. I don't know if you followed that, but this year doesn't count in eligibility. And so everybody gets a free year. And so our freshmen are going to be freshmen twice. Our seniors are going to be seniors twice and all the way through the, the deals. So it really creates a uh, kind of a budget nightmare, if you will, uh, a budget uh, uh, math problem, if you will. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out. Uh, Justin Sell has talked to our team and said, you know, everybody's scholarships are safe. Uh, and and I, I honor that. It's a lot of money for bringing the seniors back. Um, and I just finish up with our senior stories, all right? So they're sitting in in uh, Club 71, socially distanced with their face masks on, and they don't know why they're there. And uh, President Dunn's there, Justin Sells there, I'm there up front with our, our socially distanced and our separate microphones. And uh, President Dunn tells them how much he appreciates their leadership on campus and how much he cares for them. And then Justin says, basically joke's over, there's no se season. And my focus was on trying to find the eyes of those 20 seniors uh, to see how they were going to react, how they were reacting. Uh, they, they opened it up for questions. Most of the questions came from our senior class. And then they, we just let it soak in. You know, we talked to them, zoomed with them. Uh, you, know, it, you know, this is not the end of the world, but they, they, some of these guys have played football since they're three, four, five years old, and they've worked really, really hard at this term student athlete. And they do, they do. And and so they're they're they're, you know, confused, if you will. And so I'll get, I'll give you the summary of what our senior class is going to do, uh, right now. Uh, we've had one guy enter the transfer portal, 
Kay Johnson, arguably our our best uh, senior player, uh, football player, multiple All-American, has entered the transfer portal, meaning he opened himself up to transfer and uh, be uh, eligible. Um, what he, why he did that is uh, he wanted to be able to focus on his training, uh, kind of walk away from the football team, get a grade from the NFL scouts, and then make a decision. Do I transfer? Do I come back? Uh, or do I go to the NFL? So if he gets a grade that I suppose uh, he's going to get drafted, he's, gonna, he's probably going to end his football career without playing his senior year. So, uh, and we support that. We had a great Zoom with he and his parents, and, and uh, they appreciate South Dakota State, and we understand it. You know, Cade's a team first guy. We've had three guys opt out. What that means is the NCAA said during this time, and it's kind of behind the, the disguise of if you're concerned about COVID, uh, you, can, you can just take a year off and not do anything with the football team. You can do academics, you can do medical stuff, but you can't lift, run. And so we've had three guys uh, opt out. Um, they're going to be done. Uh, playing, they're going to graduate in December, and their careers are kind of uh, defined already. One guy already has a job in Sioux Falls starting in January. So we had one senior carries Achilles. So he'd already lost his year, and he's he's done. Uh, Jarek Berg, what a what a special young man uh, he is, and and uh, towards Achilles working out um, during the workout times, and so he's he's got different things he's struggling with. We've had two guys out of the 20 say they'll play in the spring and then they're done. Uh, one of those guys is an old lineman, a backup old lineman, and one of them is going to, going to law school. And they just wrote him a letter of recommendation and he'll, he'll get into law school. He's got a lot of special uh, abilities. His name's Preston Tetzlaff. And then we had 13 say they're going to play in the spring and play in the fall. So, because again, they get the year back. And so, that's where two of those guys are going to med school. You know, they're really, really good students, and they'll go to med school somewhere, and they're going to put off going to med school to play uh, a full senior season and ideally maybe even have a chance at the NFL. I love guys pursuing their dreams. And so <clears throat> 13 guys coming back. Now, I want you to uh, uh, reference this with me or see if, you, if I can explain this right. So we're recruiting next year's class, right? We've got eight commitments ready for next year's class. Those guys, those guys have uh, scholarships that are due to them. And so they come in and then our seniors come back. So we're going to have six, six classes of guys, uh, true freshmen that are on track, and then five classes that have an extra year. They all have a bonus year. So every year we're going to have guys making unique decisions if they're going to come back that, that next year. In this year, this case, we have – 13 uh, guys, and I, this is not a plea for money at all, but again, if every one of those scholarships is worth $20,000, 10000 for the semester, uh, you know, that's a lot of additional money uh, that somehow uh, we're going to find to make sure they can, they can feel fulfilled, and, uh, and they're all winners, <clears throat> and I'm guessing some after the eight game, and ideally a playoff run in the spring may say, that's good, uh, well done. I feel fine. Uh, I got my senior year in, but I'm guessing because of NFL prospects or just not yet having played. Um, take a guy like Preston Tetzlaff, the young man that's going to law school. He played behind Christian Roseboom for four years. Christian's a four-year um, All-American and uh, is in the NFL right now. And so Tetz worked as hard as anybody, maybe harder than most, honestly, focused was always ready, but just didn't get to play a lot of downs. And this is his year. And again, he gets eight games in the spring if we're able to do that. And so a um, uh, lot, a lot of neat, a lot of neat stories. And and uh, I told the guys two things, right? Uh, well, I've told them a lot of things, but two things that stick out. Um, you know, this is the toughest thing you go through in life. You are really blessed, really blessed. You know, because there's a lot of people, uh, whether it's COVID or other other things um, that that struggle in life or in, in periods of life, and then you know the Lord made you. I'm talking to our players now. The Lord made you that when you go in the weight room and you tear your muscles down, they rebuild and they're stronger. 
and you go out and condition your young lungs and heart and your tear your tear your body down, so to speak, you come back and you're stronger. When you give that first first speech and you struggle with it, but as you grow, grow, you become stronger. And so we're gonna be stronger because of this. Some way, somehow you gotta find a way in in our Zoom meetings and your your workouts and your focus and all that stuff to become out of the stronger. And I believe because of the fabric of our football team, uh, we, we will do that. I'm, I'm certain of that. Uh, and then finally, on, on a personal note, um, you know, if you follow the landscape, you probably don't follow a lot of this, but I get an a athletic director's uh, kind of an update email. I'm not sure why I get it, but I get it uh, every day. And every day, uh, schools are furloughing their coaches, cutting the pay of their coaches, cutting the pay of the staff, not filling positions. I think Nebraska cut 50 positions along with uh, cutting pay and, and, and coaches. Um, and then I'm concerned about our, our coaches. Now, not myself, because South Dakota State's been good to me, but I'm concerned about our, our 10 coaches, our trainers, our uh, strength coaches, our, our, our equipment manager. Every one of those people have young families different than me, uh, different than Lori and I, and, and uh, you know, and they live, some of them live paycheck to paycheck, and rightfully so, because we've all been there. And so um, hope and pray that <clears throat> that doesn't happen at South Coast State. Uh, I, I, I've been assured that it's not been talked about at South, South Coast State from the president and Justin Sell, uh, but it's real. And it's it's real for a lot of employees across all, all different avenues, different positions, and so on, and and uh, and so um, say a prayer for those guys because because they're all they work tremendously hard, and uh, and they love their student athletes. So that's kind of the update and what we've gone through. No no scores to report. No All American or All Conference honors. Kind of kind of interesting. The Missouri Valley gives out weekly awards, <laughs> and so. Missouri State played Oklahoma last week. Lost, I think, forty-eight to zero, and so the Missouri Valley Football Conference sends out the Defensive Player of the Week, which is a linebacker from Missouri State. I can't imagine uh, how many guys were nominated from Missouri State, but they're they're the only team that could get an award. There were no offensive awards or special teams awards, so those sides of the ball didn't do well, I guess, for Missouri State. But uh, kind of an interesting twist on where we're at. So Missouri State's going to be able to practice uh, probably, we get 15 days, they probably get, uh, they get uh, because they started for maybe having a game on the 29th and then others moved. So they started 29 days before the 29th. So they started early, early July. So they had true advantage on, uh, on the players getting practice in and, and, and growing as a football team. So. I'm exhausted. That's uh, that's it. I'll answer some questions. It's the longest I've talked in a long time. Well, uh, well, you, a much deserved drink. Uh, thank you. That's a great update. I'm I might be the only person who got lost in which calendar we were talking about in all of this. That's the hard part about 2020, right? Um, you sometimes get lost in the calendar a little bit. We'll go through the questions that were submitted in advance. We've had some come in while this is happening. Just a reminder to our viewers, if you would like to um, ask Coach a question, you can put that either in the chat or in the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. Um, our first question is from Jay Cohn. Um, his question is about team chemistry. How do you keep a good team chemistry when everything has been social distance? How do you make up for and maintain good team chemistry? You talked about this a little bit with social distancing and Zoom, and um, but you've always had a well-oiled uh, machine and team chemistry is a big part of that. So how do you how do you uh, add to that in this environment, Coach? It's been really tough. In fact, that was one of our major concerns going into all the Zooms and that being able to hang out on the football field afterwards and so on. And so we have always had uh, during the season on Monday nights a non-football meeting. And, and uh, we count it as football time, as NCAA time. But what, what we do is we sit down with our position, uh, our positions, position coach sits down with his position players and they can't talk about football, which is really hard for a football coach because they're pretty single-minded. But we, we grow as a family. And so those have been mostly Zoom. Uh, but I know some guys are meeting socially distanced on the field after practice or on an off day. 
and, and growing that way. So, so positionally, we're still growing. You know, the true freshman is hearing from the senior. Um, I was on a, a cornerback, a cornerbacks uh, non-football Zoom the other day, and the coach had some great questions. He said, if you had unlimited funds, what would you do? You know, if you had unlimited money. We got guys going all over the world. You know, I, I was pretty simple in my answers. Uh, and then he said, you know, if you, if you could start a business, what would it be? You know, we had a, amusement parks and we had restaurants and, and, and so on. So it's, we're, we're doing things that way. But, but Andy and, 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 and Jax, it is really hard to grow. We used to have a burger, a burger eating contest in the fall. It was just the highlight of fall camp. We had Special Olympics that uh, we had some unique things we did. And, and then that knocking Special Olympics, I love that organization. But uh, all those things. Uh, or I used to, we, we, we've always had the seniors out to eat at our house, Lori and I, and that, that's been off. And so it's really a struggle. The concern there, in, in a way too long answer, but the concern there are the true freshmen. You know, those are the guys that, that have, that may, they may have all their classes online. So they hardly see anybody. They sit in their room and they come to practice. And, and so really trying to monitor them. And we have a, we have a deal called the no Boucher postulate, which means if, if a player's injured, pay more attention to him because the guy I'm talking about was no Boucher. Uh, pay more attention to him than the healthy ones. And really all our players are somewhat injured right now. And so invest more in your players than you ever have. I think, you know, so we've talked at the Alumni Association about 2020 being the year you build resiliency, right? Because nothing's going the way you want it and you have to figure out what that kind of, how you become more resilient in this. Chris Kratt asked the, a similar question is how do you um, prepare for mental strength um, training perspective? You know, how do you, um, what do those conversations look like with players? Yeah, good, really a good question. We, we, uh, we, we uh, in fact, a week ago, I gave our coaches uh, a reading on adversity. And, and if, if you're in adversity and you don't get through it, then you don't grow, you, you go back backwards. So you have to find a way, to, their point was you have to find a way to get through the two foot cement wall. You have to you get you have to get to the other side, and uh, what we do, uh, we literally train. This is going to give me again too long an answer, but we have an exercise we call train the mind's heart, and train the mind's heart is the team circles up, and and they do twenty push ups, then I blow the whistle and they lock their arms at a ninety degree angle in a push up position, and they fatigue their arms. Okay. And so they lock their arms and they hang in there as I'm counting out the seconds as long as they can. And invariably, you hear all these groans and grunts and, oh, and then they'll just stop dropping. In the, almost 100%, the next time we do that, guys will go 20 seconds longer than the first time. Why? They figured out it wasn't as hard as, as, you know. And so really our minds always give in before our bodies do. I, I make the joke, and it's not a great joke, but I've never had a player collapse in practice, so that means nobody's ever given me all they've got, you know? And so on Friday, we're gonna do three sprints, train the mind's heart, three sprints, train the mind's heart, three sprints, train the mind's heart. And we're either gonna succumb to fatigue or we're gonna get more mentally tough and be able to handle adversity better. I feel like you're trying to get someone to drop. That sounds that sounds brutal. That's, um, uh, it's, a, it's a combination of a lot of things, so. So uh, on this kind of same uh, vein, Michael Miller said, how are the guys holding up to the disappointment and uncertainty of the situation? You touched a little bit on this, um, but have, have you had some success moving some of that disappointment into positives, either for some individual players or um, kind of for the team or um, different groups? I, I think, I think uh, we use the term play in the present. I think after the first two weeks, they, they've settled in on these are the cards we're dealt. You know, uh, you know, football's a, well, sports, but football specifically in my life teaches you so much. It teaches you so much that you can apply to life. And man, if I if I if I miss a tackle and I can't get by that instantly on the football field, then I'm going to struggle in life, right? Because there's going to be a lot of adversity, a lot of mistakes in life. And so our guys have handled it. Uh, the attitudes are good. Uh, I tell our coaches, okay, what what is a win this week? You know, what what I said. Yesterday at practice, what is a win? Fewer mental errors than the day before, right? Because we're not tackling anybody. All we're doing is running through plays and defenses. So if the cornerbacks go from five mental errors to 
four mental errors, praise the Lord, it's a victory. And those are the things we got to look at. And th those things win games also, the, the mental part of the game. So that's important. Um, you touched on Kate Johnson a little bit. Skip Webster asked if he has, um, si has if he's, is he still in school? Has he signed with another team through the portal system? Um, clearly hate to lose him, but bright future ahead for um, Cade and a great, just a great student athlete here at SDSU. He is. He's a great young man. And, and uh, tell you what, that was hard for him to tell the football team uh, that, he was, that he was leaving. It was really an emotional moment for a lot of people. Uh, Cade is at home. He's taking 10 credits online. He's working out. Uh, I'm sure he's talking to agents. I don't know what he what he can do or what he can't do, but I know that that's not my area of expertise. We have another coach that deals with that stuff, but uh, and he's just weighing, weighing his odds. And uh, he said, if things don't work out, he'd like to come back. Uh, I know a lot of coaches say, um, once you leave, you're done, all that stuff. Uh, if I got punished for every mistake I made in life, I'd have never got anywhere. I'd still be back on the farm. So uh, I don't consider this a mistake. I consider it a decision for the welfare of Kay Johnson. And if he wants to come back, I'll talk to the seniors and I know they'll welcome him back. So. Um, Jack, Jack Kolbeck asked, um, how will players hold up physically if there's a spring football season? You referred to it as fall in the spring. So, um, and then those same players, many of them, um, will return around and start fall um, football in August. Um, is that enough recuperation time? It probably isn't. Uh, you know, and, and so I, again, I assume as we go down this path, the NCA will come up with some new rules that will, will answer that question. Uh, I know this, my vision for the games in the spring, again, our, our true freshmen are going to go through spring ball this fall and they'll be that much more ready to play in the spring. And so we'll have at least 25 guys way further along than they would have been had we played this fall. So we can spread out reps that way. We're not going to practice, you know, physical at all in the spring, uh, understanding what, what the, the question's about. But there's a lot of concern about that. You know, it isn't, it isn't sometimes the one hit that ends your career. It's accumulative hits. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, it, uh, concussions, concussion type hits. And so that's the real concern, along with the joints and so on. I know this. I'll go back to our priority. Our decisions will be made on the welfare of the football team. And if that's the practice like the NFL does, you know, after fall camp, the NFL, they don't put pads on. They just walk through stuff and, and dance around and, and, uh, uh, and then go play the game. So we might evolve to that. Um, a question that came in um, from Fred. Um, have you reached out to fellow coaches, anyone who has – have you talked to any of the coaches who have played – a game this season, kind of in this environment? And have you talked to any of your fellow coaches that have had a game in 2020? I have not, I have not. You know, their, their schedules are, are totally different. I mean, they're, they're, it's a hundred hour a week deal getting ready up, getting ready for a football game. And that's not an exaggeration. And so for me to call and I'll call them afterwards, you know, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of torn. Um, you know, our guys are, our guys can't play and they're watching football on TV. And that's, that's disappointing for me. But on the other hand, if those teams get through the season and handle it, it gives, gives us uh, hope for in the spring for us to get through it and, and, and handle it. Again, in the spring, we'll have to test every week 100% of everybody in our football program. So uh, ideally, the cost of testing goes down. But you're talking about uh, a huge uh, bill. Really something cool, though. You know, and, and I don't know if you – Andy, you probably know the terminology better, but our diagnostic lab, right, on campus here is able to do testing now. And so we're a huge advantage compared to schools that don't have that because we don't have to, we won't have to, if we, if we don't do too many tests, they can handle our tests, we can get them back within a day on campus here. And so it would be a real benefit. And a lot of people worked hard to get that all, all uh, in line to be able to do that. Yeah, the um, diagnostic lab on campus has been certified to be able to run corona tests on humans, and neither one of John Stigelmeyer or Andy Foberg should say any more about getting the right terminology of what that means, but it's certainly, it's certainly helping things at SDSU, and um, agreed, a lot of people did a lot of work to make that happen, and that's a, that's a really good thing, not only for football, but for the, for the whole campus. 
Um, so we've had some questions about um, spring ball, but um, with the Big Ten now officially, officially um, considering late fall um, start rather than uh, waiting until spring, um, any chance Missouri Valley switches gears and decides to do a late fall start uh, rather than waiting until, I think you said the, the February date was uh, kind of a first game. No, I, I think there's zero chance. Uh, there's been so much work done on the spring, playing the, the conference schedule in the spring. Um, I think, uh, all, all, in fact, we should get our schedules here real quick because once they settle in on 16 team championship and what the dates are, then then our people in the Missouri Valley will put together the schedule. Um, we, being a team player, and we all are at South Dakota State, from the president on down, we ask for our bye week to be the Summit League Championship week. And so uh, there's not a conflict. Ideally, we don't have a home game and a potentially a home volleyball game and then the Summit League basketball. But, uh, you know, again, they're just trying to take care of all jackrabbits that want to experience this. And really, we're part of history. This is something that's going to be in history books and a new story in, in the press guide. So um, I, I look forward to how it all unravels. Uh, do you see any issue, um, Jason wants to know if you see any issue with the spring season and the NFL draft. We talked a little bit about some seniors. We've also got a question about seniors um, playing, you know, the likelihood of them playing in the spring and then staying and playing next fall. Any idea how many? So it's kind of a dual senior question, but um, talk about, you know, kind of what you see out of your, your, your current seniors. Yeah. Um, again, Cade is pursuing the NFL. He's hoping to be drafted. Uh, Logan Backus and Wes Chinant are two guys specifically that are, uh, Logan's a linebacker, Wes is our starting center. Both those guys are going to eventually go to med school. Uh, they are hoping for a shot at the NFL. So they, they're going to play in the spring, play in the fall, and then be on kind of a regular schedule. They just get an extra year. Uh, for the guys that play in the spring, uh, as I understand, uh, they can get drafted. Uh, but I think, you know, the top guys are, are many of them are opting out. In, in, not, in, not in our program, but across the nation, they're opting out. They know they're going to get drafted, and uh, they're, looking, they're, they're preparing for that. So there's a true conflict. Um, for me, uh, I've never recruited a guy and looked at him and said, oh, he's going to be an NFL prospect. Come to South Dakota State so we can prepare you. I, I've never looked at a kid like that. I, I've looked at him as they're going to be an engineer. They're going to be a, a, a math teacher. They're going to be a, a go home and help farm. And boy, if they get a chance at the NFL, then they're pursuing their dream. And there's no, there's no higher dream for an NFL for a, a student athlete at our level. But, uh, but, it, but a kid that goes to LSU, that's the stepping ground to go to the NFL. At Nebraska, that's the stepping, stepping stone. And so those kids look at it differently. Our kids don't look at it like that. Uh, but they do pursue their dreams. We'll have, we'll have six to eight guys do a pro combine next fall if we're on schedule and, and get tested. And this year we had three in camps, Mikey, Luke, and, and Christian, and, and Christian stuck, and the other two guys were released. Um, I, I don't know if you can answer this question. Scott asked um, if we've had any positive cases on the team or with coaches. So I don't, I don't know if you can answer that question or not. Uh, well, incomplete, innocent, or ignorant, I guess. Um, uh, we've had some cases, yeah. We've had, uh, I think, uh, under 20. We had uh, probably five while the guys were still at home quarantined at home or, or away from school, not quarantined, but away from school. In fact, one of the toughest guys in the football team said for eight days, he's never hurt uh, that bad as, as he did with as when he had COVID. So uh, it affects everybody differently. Our, our punter, his roommate had it and uh, roommate didn't have any signs. And so he ended up getting quarantined and didn't get any signs. So I don't know if he got it or not. Uh, we don't test uh, people that don't have any signs in South Dakota, we just quarantined them. So I would, I would say right, right, right around 16 guys uh, have had it. Um, you know, the, the, I get on my soapbox here a little bit. You know, they, everybody says college students will be college students, you know, and the house parties and all that stuff. Well, th these, these guys are not college students, right? They're, they're elite 
college students or student athletes, and they don't have to go with the flow. You know, they don't have to, they don't, you know, Romans 12, 2 says, don't conform to the ways of the world. Don't conform to the ways of college, right? You know, uh, and that's football, 12, 2. And so as people are going this way to the house party, go this way and take care of yourself. And I think our guys, for the most part, are doing that. Uh, let's talk about that spring schedule a little bit. We've got some questions. Um, will those games kind of work mostly on Saturdays? Will you have any games Thursday, Friday? You know, probably it, 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 the schedule being a little bit different, as you mentioned, right? Um, other sports happening at the same time, just kind of how those schedules have worked. Will those games be primarily on Saturdays? I think primarily on, on, on Saturdays, but they've left open a Friday or Sunday game based on what's going on on your campus. And so let's say our uh, third home game is whatever, and, and there's a conflict on campus, we, uh, on Saturday we could have it uh, Friday or we could have it Sunday. I think that's up to the host uh, team. Uh, I, I do, I think I'm pretty accurate on this. There's 19,340 seats, I think, in our stadium. And I think they're gonna allow between 7,000 and 7,500 people. So these are going to be these are going to be special special tickets. So when that opens up, make sure you get your tickets early for those March games. Okay. You just answered what was my next question. So very good. Monty Mason asked if we were going if fans were going to be uh, in attendance for spring ball. So don't put away your boots and warm clothes. Um, it, you're gonna you might need them for the beginning of Jackrabbit football. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. Yep. Awesome. We may set some records for uh, the coldest games at, in our stadium. This spring, so. Well, if people if people have been tuning into Jackrabbit football Saturdays, um, that game in Montana that was aired this last Saturday, um, it was one degree at kickoff in Montana. That was pretty cold. I don't I don't know if I I don't know if I've got if I've got it in me to to go much colder than that, Coach. That was that was pretty rough. Yeah, that, yeah that was that was bitter. I loved. Uh, Zenner's statement about something on his foot and the old lineman was standing on his foot. He couldn't feel his foot. <laughs> but, uh, uh, a shout out to Tyler Merriam and his staff putting those together. What a cool deal it is. Matt, I'm the coach, right? And I get the list. This is the only time I ever heard a game on the radio. So I'm sitting there. My wife's nervous about the Kansas game. I'm going, honey, you are there. You know <laughs> and uh, so it's, it's been a treat and a shout out to Tyler and his staff. Well, please tell Lori that we anticipate an undefeated season in um, football, uh, Saturday, Jackrabbit football Saturdays. Um, but we did get a question about, so um, for those of you who don't know, Lori makes um, Rice Krispie treats and a lot of them during the football season um, with COVID restrictions. Our, our Brittany wants to know if we're still getting uh, Rice Krispie treats. We're gonna have them, she and I talked uh, last week. So uh, timely question. We're going to have them after the spring game, yes, because we're surely going to win the spring game. And they only <laughs> get them after wins. So let me do the math real quick. He's made 21,912 Rice Krispie bars, 21,912. So, uh, there, there should be, I mean, that's got to be a record. I mean, please tell the people at the cereal company, right? That's got to be a record. Um, back to uh, football, Ray said, so with eight new recruits, um, how do you think, how many do you plan to bring in? Obviously, we talked a little bit about the um, doubling up on classes, having six classes um, go through at the same time, a big difference. Um, kind of how, how do you think that all plays out a little bit? Um, and then what is it, you, you talked a little bit about, obviously that's a huge financial change for the program too. Yeah, here's what we've done as a staff. That, that's a really good, that's an in-depth question and a, and a tough question to, give you the exact answer. As a staff, we have a Christmas list, okay? And the Christmas list, like, just like when we were little, we picked everything we wanted, right? And so Coach Eck wants three O-linemen. Uh, Coach Schleichner wants two tight ends. Uh, Coach uh, Rogers, linebacker coach, wants three linebackers. And so we put this together. We have so many scholarships, and then we try to do our shopping and get that done. What I did two, three weeks ago is I asked them for the minimum the minimum, the smallest Christmas list. So literally they took that list and said, this year we could function with just this many at this position in anticipation of that question. It has nothing to do with roster size. It has nothing to do with scholarship limits because those seniors that come back don't count for anything. If all three, 13 of those seniors come back, 
we have 110 guys in our football team, we're going to get 123 in the football team. We get 63 equivalencies for the 110 or the 85 that are on scholarship. We get whatever those other guys cost. So it's, but every year that happens then, because every year we've got this extra year for uh, four years. And so, um, an interesting question. Justin Sell asked us as head coaches, you know, what are the numbers? And, uh, you know, football obviously has the biggest number of people and, again, the biggest number of seniors. And I gave him our numbers. He is putting uh, his, his – he and Matt Maher, they're putting it down on paper and trying to figure out how we're going to handle this this whole thing. But a uh, whole, whole different deal. But, you know, read the national – Google these things. Uh, Purdue is going to project losing $50 million because of no football. Not, not other sports because of football. I mean, these, these programs are losing – some of them projecting $100 million. So our problem – is is really small compared to that and it isn't a problem it, it's a solution we gotta find a solution well and to your point right university of minnesota last week announced that they were cutting some programs um it, it is affecting everyone but um there are ways to support student athletes and to support um the football program and so um i think this is a one of those times that if you are someone who's able to do that, this is a time when um, that that may make an even bigger difference in the future of the program and just kind of how things uh, go around here. Um, to that end, we've got two kind of interesting questions about um, uh, what, what facilities, right? So one is uh, Gary wants to know if severe cold in February and March could result in moving a game or two to the Dakota Dome. You know, their athletic director offered uh, Justin that on, on their Zoom call, and and Justin Justin doesn't go to Vermilion ever, so I don't think uh, we someone would have to give him directions. We, did, we, did, you know, we played uh, Mankato in the Division Two days, a late game, uh, and uh, that was a bad experience. So I doubt if we'll do that. Um, but I know this: our guys would rather play anywhere than not play and so if whatever whatever it would take i know our guys would be up for it our, our players don't feel about usd like a lot of people do because they have they're not used to that the length and the intensity of that rivalry well then i will um send you up north with the next question um the post-pandemic and successful vaccine would an enclosed stadium help with recruiting national talented athletes like ndsu can do is there a plan to enclose the Dana J. Dykow Stadium. Coach, I don't write the questions, I just read the questions. Um, this may, uh, I may ruffle some people's feathers with this one. Uh, I don't think, I don't think an indoor stadium uh, really uh, helps recruit guys. I think our facilities help develop guys, you know, the SJAC, the indoor, uh, our, our weight room, our, our cold, hot tub, all those things help develop guys. Uh, and I, I hope, I hope we never recruit a guy that comes here because of his, our facilities. He's way too shallow for me to, to deal with. Um, if, if North Dakota State has better material than we do, uh, I would say it's because of uh, being able to do some things we can't do because of budget. And I made the mistake of telling the difference a year ago, and, and I won't do it again, but uh, you can Google my answer a year ago and see what the difference is in their budget from ours. But uh, we beat North Dakota State more than anybody in the Division One era. It's a great rivalry. Our guys don't think they're less, or less of a football team than North Dakota State. It's a great rivalry and friendship. Um, and so I think it might be the best rivalry in FCS football in the nation, which is pretty cool. I would agree with that. I would also say for those of you who maybe haven't had a chance either to step inside the S Jack or um, see those weight room facilities, see some of the things that are here. Um, it, it, it just, to me, there's just so much more to a football program than whether you, the fans get to sit inside, which might, I might be a little bit of this, right? But you touched on the importance of what I think it happens in recruiting here. And Bill Douglas would like you to talk about how important character is when you're recruiting. It's, uh, it's very important. It's, uh, here's what we do. We, 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 
we, we look at a highlight tape, we get, we get excited about a young man. We get his transcript and clear him, is, can, he, can, he, can he do it in college? Can he excel in college? And I'm not saying everybody has to have a 28 ACT and above. We've had guys go through the engineering department here with 21 ACTs and, uh, and, and, and they're doing a great job. And so I don't, I don't measure intelligence on that. Uh, and so then we watch more film. We watch another highlight tape and we watch two games. And then we start asking them uh, our 18 tough questions and getting to know them. And, uh, you know, so one of the things I love to ask them is, what is your greatest accomplishment outside of sports? So a lot of kids can't answer that because they, they, don't, they don't think of anything outside of sports. Not that they're shallow, but that's just that's the way they've been brought up. I've had kids say, I was a lifeguard and I saved a kid in the pool that had drowned, brought him back to life. I've had one young man say, you know, my parents are both uh, deaf and they're divorced and my sister and I aren't deaf and it's been my job to mend that deal. Man, I, I, I want to grab those guys and kiss them on the cheek and say, come be part of our football team because th those guys are a much deeper. Um, you know, we ask, uh, uh, you know, one of my favorite things is to have a young man sit with his parents in my office and have the parents gush over stuff and talk and, and just look at the kid and see, is he embarrassed? Or is he hanging on every word they say, saying, I love these guys. These are my parents. And that gives me a great example, a great uh, measure of how they're going to respect authority because that's the ideal authority in, in their lives. Um, and then it's really hard to recruit a guy for eight months and then a red flag pops up and you say, joke's over, done. We're not going to, you're not, you're meant for us. We're going to move on. And uh, ideally, we don't go that long for a guy before we really figure out what he's about. But um, character, work ethic, um, they're all really important. Um, we're getting close on time here. I've got two questions. Um, then we're going to um, let Coach get back to uh, the rest of his job. But obviously, um, high school football, you talked about recruiting and you, the, you start with film, right? Um, a lot of high school uh, football is not happening around the country or it's happening differently in some places or in a different schedule, maybe coinciding in a spring schedule with our season, much like you would normally be doing. But um, is it going to be different in recruiting? You talked about that shorter list, but you're still looking at sophomores and juniors, right? How are you looking at those uh, upcoming student athletes? It's really different. Um, the last three years, we've been essentially done recruiting uh, by this point in our season. Maybe we had one or two guys left. Uh, last year we lost a couple guys, so we had to go a little longer. This year we've got uh, seven or eight from the Christmas list. You know, the Christmas list I think is is uh, 15 or 16. So it's a lot slower. We have a lot of young. We had a young man that committed from Texas that had never been on campus. So he drove up from Texas. We could not see him when he was on campus because the NCAA regulations, admissions wasn't open yet. So he just walked around campus, drove home, said, "I love South Dakota State," and committed. I still have not met him in person. It's all been Zoom. And uh, so things like that are totally different. Um, and I think uh, it's going to continue to be different because uh, I don't, if I'm a high school principal, I don't want coaches coming into my school when they open up recruiting. And, and, you know, 30 coaches coming in to see guys. So we'll see what happens down the road. It's ever-changing. Uh, so we're going to end on this question from Chad. How do you help build lifelong skills in your student-athletes? Um, well, we have, we have, well, one of the things we do is we serve, and I think that's a very important, uh, you know, Andy used your term, you used our term, make a difference, Mad. You know, making a difference is having a positive impact in every situation you're in. It's not, it's not about just catching touchdown passes or setting a bench press record. It's, it's helping a student out across campus. It's picking up garbage as you walk across campus. It's, being at the house party and taking care of somebody that drank too much and getting them home safe. All those things go on and on and on. Uh, our players have to do three service projects a year to letter. And so take Kay Johnson, if he comes back and plays in the spring and doesn't do three service projects, I'm not going to letter him because uh, I want guys to grow up in our program, uh, giving back uh, to the community. I want them to look to, for, Look, look at other people, put other people ahead of themselves. And I think that's, uh, that's the right way to live. Um, you know, our life, our, our life skills, we have life skills with our freshmen. 
And we talk about adver- diversity, we talk about adversity, we talk about leadership, we talk about uh, a lot of things. Uh, I think that's starting the ball rolling in terms of growing up in our program. And uh, Andy, I, I tell this story and then I'll, I'll um, you know, years ago, I was being interviewed by ESPN uh, for our Eastern Washington game, and the guy interrupted me, the, the one of the radio guys on, on the phone interrupted me and said, Coach, you used the term student athlete. We've never heard anybody else say that. And I thought, number one, I was embarrassed he said that, that coaches don't use that term. But that's what our guys are. They're student athletes. They're going to excel in the classroom, on the football field, and in the society. And uh, and they're going to – you can see them in, in – uh, who – uh, Jesse Borkman called me yesterday from Fort Leonard Wood. He's in the military. He said, you know, coach, there's three, three guys that played college football down here in this class. And he said, all three of us think football put us way ahead of the rest of these clowns. <laughs> right? And so I think, uh, I think our football program, any football program can do it. Ours does it. Well, thank you for being our, thank you for doing that, but thank you for being our first guest and our most popular guest so far. Um, <laughs> our next uh, Rabbit Roundup will be October 20th, and our guest will be um, president of, this, of South Dakota State University, Barry Dunn. Um, so look forward to an email um, to register for that soon. Again, Coach, thank you very much to everyone who joined us um, on this inaugural. Thank you, bo- uh, thank you so much, and uh, we'll be in touch. Stay safe. Thanks, everybody, for joining, and keep score, Andy. So- we know who gets the most participants. Okay? Do you really want me to tell President Dunn if you beat him? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> you judge that. <laughs> Thanks. Have a great day. Take care.